Hi everyone, I recently shot a video about this USB dummy load. It's basically just two huge resistors hooked up to a USB connector so you can test power banks and power supplies and other things like that. Now one of the things that I obviously noticed during the recording and of course is to be expected is how hot these resistors become. Now these are rated for very high temperatures so it's probably not a big concern but I realized that I have these heat sinks laying around which have a double sided sticky pad. Now apparently they're meant to be firm transfer pads but I suspect it's just normal sticky pad and basically just by design the heat is going to transfer through so I thought I might as well try stick these on here and see what they do because although they can handle the heat I want to see if I can keep them a little bit cooler so we're going to start with it just plugged in as it comes from the factory no heat sink no cooling anything like that and we'll just see how fast it gets up to temperature and what kind of temperatures it hits so you should be able to see from my flur one that the temperature is rising we're currently at around 36 degrees Celsius. It's now been around 30 seconds and we're up to 52 degrees Celsius and it's rising pretty quickly. We're now around one minute in and we're up to 73 degrees and I have a feeling we're gonna keep going all the way up to 120 degrees Celsius, which is the upper limit of my Flora One thermal camera. And at the three minute mark, we've just about hit 100 degrees Celsius and um, it's pretty much going to keep going I think until we hit the 120. So we're now at the 4 minute mark and we're just about to hit 120 when my thermal camera will hit its top limit. Okay and there we go just under 5 minutes and we've hit the basically the maximum that my thermal camera can read which is 120 degrees Celsius so it's likely to continue getting warmer. So let's remove it, cool it down and move on to our next test. So the dummy load is now cooled down. We're going to do the same experiment, but this time we're going to have a fan blowing over it to see what happens and what kind of temperatures we hit and how fast we hit them. So I'll start by turning the fan on and then I'll turn on our dummy load. So our dummy load is now on and it's starting to warm up. Okay, this time it's actually warming up a lot faster. I'm wondering if that's because we've only just cooled it and maybe there's still some thermal heat left inside the resistors that we weren't able to easily measure on the external surfaces. So we've already hit 80 degrees Celsius and we're only around a minute in. So we're now at 90 degrees Celsius and I thought that maybe the fan was going to help control the rise a little bit. It did seem to slow it down a little bit but it looks like it's still going to keep going up so let's see what happens. So we're now around 3 minutes in and we're about to hit 100 degrees Celsius. Now it is rising but it seems to be in much smaller steps. So we're now around 5 minutes in and it's actually been sitting pretty steady at 97, 98, 99 degrees Celsius. So the fan definitely is providing some cooling. I don't know if it's enough where if you left this for say an hour if it would actually maintain that temperature. but it definitely is making a difference. So now we're going to test with the heat sinks and no fan and I've tried to point my flur one at the side of the resistor so that we can get an accurate measurement of heat. So the power is now on and immediately we're measuring around 45 degrees Celsius and it's rising pretty quickly. Now although I am cooling this down between tests it definitely is obvious that if you reheat it after cooling it it does reheat much quicker so the rise in temperature, like the speed that it rises, isn't really accurate between these tests. But what I'm really more interested in is the top temperature anyway. So we've already hit 90 degrees Celsius and it's only been around a minute, minute and a half. So we're now at 110 degrees at two minutes in and it looks like we're probably going to hit that 120. And I'm just going to put my finger on this heat sink to feel if it feels warm. Yeah, they both feel warm, although not too much. Oh, it's getting a little bit warm. Yeah, I can still touch it without burning myself. Okay, and we've hit the 120 degree limit, and we're only around, you know, under three minutes. So, so now we're going to try and use the fan with the heat sinks and see how that works out. So at around 30 seconds in, we're approaching 70 degrees Celsius. At one minute, we're hitting around 90 degrees Celsius. So again, we're heating up pretty quickly, which doesn't bode well for this test. At a minute and a half, we're hovering around 100, 101. I'm hoping that it will just settle here, but let's see what happens. So we're just coming up to three minutes and it's been sitting on 108 degrees Celsius for about 20 seconds now. 
So we've just passed the four minutes mark and we seem to be pretty steady between 108 degrees and 110 degrees Celsius. So we've just passed six minutes and we're hovering around 110, 111 degrees Celsius. So it seems to be holding pretty steady somewhere around that temperature. Now, now the interesting thing is I can fill these heat sinks and they're barely even warm. But when I fill this resistor on the side, it's extremely hot. So I don't think much of the heat is actually being transferred through at all. So that's a bit of a disaster. I guess one of the problems might be that there's quite a small surface area of the resistor making contact with the heatsink. It's really only the very top of the resistor that touches this. Now I wouldn't say it's a complete disaster because it does seem to stay pretty stable around 110 degrees using the heat sinks and the fans, but it's still way less than what I was expecting or hoping for. So uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not crucial that I actually managed to cool this thing down. I just wanted to try it as an experiment. So if you have any suggestions of different things I can try, put them in the comment section down below. And if you found this video even a little bit interesting, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.